stole Ryan Reynolds' private jet for a Hindu. Three strangers here who are going to tell us a, a different story each, and we have to figure out who is telling the truth and who is telling porky pies. We've never got this. Well, I've, I've never seen us get no this right. No one has ever got have this we ever, We've never, ever got this we right. Always so eliminate we the need right your help. Oh, first. God, I'm not very good. We need <laughs> women's intuition. Okay. Okay, okay. All right, well, let's begin. Oh, do I, is this? Please take yeah. a seat. Functional. Yeah, I, like shorts off and like <laughs> paper out. <laughs> So, I am Sammy from Bedford, yeah. and in the space of 12 months, I killed two of my pets by accident. Okay, go on. Believable. What, what I know he's done it. Man. I just know he's done it. What so, um, I'll start with the second one. Okay. Um, which I feel like less bad about because it, was, it wasn't really my fault. Go on. Um, so, this was uh, I was visiting my cousin um, and like, my aunt and uncle who are quite wealthy and they've got like a, a pool in their back garden, like a kind of proper dugout underground pool. And we would go over there quite often for like barbecues and stuff. And then, so I knew where the, the switches were to control the pool cover. So it was a mechanical pool cover. Yeah. Um, oh, and we would bring our dog over there. No. And uh, there was one time where I pressed the button, the pool cover was going over. I went back inside, no. opened the door, dog ran out, fell in the pool, cover went over. But it was like, it was mo like mostly done when the dog jumped in. And then at that point, it was like, I started freaking out. So I was like, ran over to the pool, tried to like move the cover, broke one side of it, went back in, got my dad, he went out. I stayed in the house with my mum and then, yeah, no your more dog. Your family's dog? Yes. That sounds traumatic. That sounds too dark to be on this show, if I'm, if I'm being quite honest. That's traumatic. Nah, I'm sad even hearing that. I hope it's not real. So the other one was, this was about like nine months to a year before. So I still had the dog and I also had a tortoise and I, so I was about like eight or nine at the time. And I had a very kind of like cartoon worldview. And I was like, yeah, animals are friends. So I'd give the tortoise to the dog to play with. <laughs> and he brought it out to the garden and was like chewing it up and like throwing it around. Nah. And this was when my mum had been out for like. This is not the same dog. This is the same dog. So, so like the, the pool cover got revenge. revenge. The pool cover got revenge. It might, but basically, Calm took the broken. tortoise out, chewed it up, got it really muddy. And I was like, Oh, I need to like clean it before my mum gets back. So I put the tortoise in the dishwasher. <laughs> Stinking. <laughs> sit, up, sit up, sit up, sit up. What do you mean? Sit up and stand over there. No, I feel like oh, that's true. No, no. Right. No, that did not so at that, at that age, if you're eight years old, right? This can't be true. I was used to putting like plates no, in the dishwasher. This can't be true. And I just, I didn't think that. I just thought, yeah, it just sort of sprays it with water, rinses it off. No. Arrest I didn't. Yeah, arrest this man. Uh, I was eight years old. Wait, did you know it was already dead? It, so it wasn't actually dead after the like full rinse cycle. <laughs> stand so. Up and stand so then I've got a hammer. <laughs> no, no, it, like, it wasn't long after. I basically like, because it gets hot in there. Yes, so it does. I, it gets really I kind hot. of like, I kind of cooked it. Thanks, I, like, thanks, for, it. thanks for your story. Can you <laughs> return to the gallery? That's right. <laughs> guys, oh guys, my. this can't be true. Hello, sir. Would you like to take a seat and tell us your story? Certainly. Thank you very much. What's your name and where'd you come from? I am Kevin. I'm from Wimbledon. Okay. And my story is that I singly handedly prevented a bank robbery. Uh, I had been working the bank for a little while, and one day I was uh, working as a cashier, and uh, all of a sudden the gentleman came in and certainly pulled out this gun. Um, we've got the uh, glass there, so I felt a little bit protected. It's a bulletproof glass. Well, you're told it's bulletproof mm, you don't know. when you sign up to be a cashier, but it's never been tested in this mm -hmm. branch. Uh, certainly when I had been there, so you, your kind of confidence goes a little bit in that. Um, anyway, he, he pulls out the gun, asks me to put the money, put and he's, the got, he's got this plastic bag waiting for me. So I, I sort of thought, you know, I froze a little bit. I, I started to reach, do what he's told, um, to fill up his bag, this bag, plastic bag. How did bag. the bag get to you? He like passed it. He gave him the Yeah, so bag. it's the glass, but he's got the little bit underneath. So just, under, yeah, put it in he's there. put it under there. Okay. Fill this up. Okay. I don't want any fuss. Hurry up. Okay. Right. So I start to. I froze around. Am I supposed to do this? Is this really happening? Mm -hmm. uh, you always think it's going to happen to somebody else. So I thought I better do what he's told. 
In fact, the, uh, the, the manager behind me is telling me, just do what he says, Kevin, mm -hmm. do what he says. Something's stopping me. No, I've got to protect the bank here a little bit. I, I don't know what it was. I've got, yeah. I want to try and do something a bit heroic to look balls, like Kevin, I'm trying balls. to... <laughs> Big balls. Yeah. yeah, well, the thing is, I got the glass and he, was, he went a bit quiet and I, my colleague had just made me a coffee. I did a crazy thing. I poured Boiling the hot coffee, coffee on, the on his hand. hands. He dropped the and that, note and what he ran on away. his side of the, the glass on yeah. the floor. So I kick the button. We were all trained up mm -hmm. to kick the, the alarm. Mm -hmm. um, the alarm's now going off. Yeah. And with his wet hands and everything, he realised that he'd been sort of... Rumbled. Rumbled. He'd been, yeah, he'd been delayed. Um, right. Thank and you. And that's it. So, what, yeah, what, what, what right. bank was this? HSBC. HSBC. In Wimbledon, I yes. presume? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for your story. That's you. Thank you. Can, can thank come you back to the gallery. Wimbledon. Thank you. Yes. Please, take a seat. Hello. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm Liz. I'm from Shepparton in Surrey. And I stole Ryan Reynolds' private jet for a Hindu. Oh. Stole. Stole. Stole is a... It's a grey area, mm -hmm. but it, I consider it to be stolen, but legally. Okay, go on. Uh, otherwise, I probably wouldn't be telling it if I'm I was quite honest. Say, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So I worked for a major airline for many years, and uh, then five or six years ago, six years ago, I started working for a private jet company because I thought it'd be a bit more interesting taking a few celebs around. Turns out to be mostly business people, rich people, rather than celebs. But on this occasion, I was chartered to take a small private jet from Switzerland. So I flew out on a main airline, got to Switzerland, picked up the jet and brought back Ryan Reynolds and his crew, his mm -hmm. posse, back to London where they were filming. I think it was Deadpool 2. Okay. Um, they'd been doing some scenes in the mountains in Switzerland. They had to come back. Um, they didn't want anything. They were tired. They just slept all the way. He's talking to the pilot. He said, what's your week going like? And I said, it's a bit crap. I've had to miss my best mate's Hindu because I had to do this. And he said, where is it? I said, South France. And he said, OK. I said, I just can't make it now. I'm never going to get down there. Mm -hmm. And the pilot said, Ryan Reynolds has chartered this. It's staying on the ground in this airfield for a couple of days. I'm going to do a few maintenance things. He said, leave it with me. I'll see if I can swing it because I need to get some extra hours in and I, there's a few maintenance things we need to do. So he rang me that night and went, be at the airfield tomorrow with your passport and what you need. We're going to take it down to the South Bronx to do its training and uh, Nice. Okay, nice. Mm. And I said, I'll take that. I did, he didn't take me back. I had to get the train back. Hmm, uh. damn, okay. Interesting. That's, that sounds is, believable. That sounds very, very believable. Almost too believable. Almost too believable. No, but you know, what's the best thing that's ever happened to me? She's, she speaks as if she's telling a story. She wasn't hesitant. No, but this is what they do. Yeah, it's they do. It can't be loaded. I'm just a stewardess. Um, well, yeah, thank you for your story. Thank you. You can return to the gallery. Thank you, Liz. She was very, very thorough. Yeah. I feel like you were a bit... Maybe too many details in the bank. Yes, Maybe and I, and I feel like you were a little bit... Hesitant with Could have been a things. traumatic experience, though. It is a bank robbery. Yes. So we'll maybe give okay. allowances for that. I, I'm I, looking smiling now. Yeah. Do you know, I believe, I believe maybe someone he knows of had the dog situation happen with the pool cover. Yeah, it's but a, it wasn't all together, it's a bit much. And then, and then it's just, and it's gone wildly out of control. So it's a I, bit much. Vote. So first. you voted Sammy. Sammy. Yes. Leo, who you voting? I'm going to vote the bank story. Okay. I don't hate You're that. The I don't hate that vote. as a vote. So now, this is what you've done to yourself, Toby. You have the deciding vote. Yeah. I'm voting for Liz. Having fun? Head on over to SidePlus.com to get the full exclusive experience.